Should be good there, Marcus. Yeah, ready to go. Make sure my buttons are working. Okay. Excellent. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go ahead and get started. I want to uh, thank you very much for joining us. I'm talking a little louder tonight because of the fan. So just hopefully everybody can hear me. I also want to let you know we have a, a nice crowd online as well. So I am purposefully trying to stay in the camera screen here up against this, okay? So when we go to question and answers, I'll walk out, I'll repeat the question so everybody online can hear as well. So I just wanna be sure. So we'll have our speakers here. This uh, OWL device is seeing the screen and our sound. So just know that I'll repeat them back to all of you. So uh, again, I'm Marcus Pockner. I wanna thank you very much uh, for joining us for this quarterly update on Uplands. Um, this is our third quarter uh, update, one week late. Uh, we scheduled this again around some city council meetings and discussions to be sure that we can continue to provide data to all of our neighbors. So we'll go to the next slide, please. Uh, this is our team that is here and available. We have other members here as well. Marcus and Todd, the two of us will primarily present today, go through the information, get other team members, as well as city staff that is here to answer any other questions that are there. Next slide. So folks, our agenda tonight, again, I'm trying to stay on this side so everybody can see the screen. We're going to focus on the guidelines, the neighborhood update, just the overall neighborhoods, what's happening there. Water conservation, a topic that we always keep track of, make sure that we're following our commitments on water usage and water conservation. We'll talk about the development application summary. And then probably most important, number five there, the anticipated construction schedule. I'll acknowledge to everyone, there is a lot of construction going around the site. Um, I've just been driving the site for the last half hour. I know our team was all around looking at different things. I know you know even more than us as neighbors how much construction is going on in the neighborhood. I will tell you, this phase we're in right now through the uh, second quarter of next year is the most construction period that is off-site. It's really in the public realm, the roadways, all of that. Then when those roadways, that larger trunk infrastructure is in place, we move on-site and that construction is really out of that public realm and a lot of the disruption will be limited. Next slide. All right, folks, we're going to go to the next slide here and talk just a little bit meeting guidelines. We all know how to go through this. Um, I want to especially thank Crown Point for hosting us. I want to be very sure we all saw the incredible improvements in the parking lot. Uh, we are back in school. We're back in session, so they are staying late with us. So we try to end promptly at 630 and go outside. We're happy to stay for questions, but we need to leave so everybody else can go home. They've already been working a long day. Um, I want to be sure if you need exact or specific follow-up, info at uplandscolorado.com. I-N-F-O at uplandscolorado.com. We will do questions and answers as always. We will be respectful, keep it respectful, and we will go through that. We want to be sure and work through this information. Next slide. This is a, an updated slide, folks, that I'm going to move over here to tell you a little bit about. So I want to walk through this graphic, there's a number of new colors that are engaged here. So the red is the sanitary sewer improvements. That's an ongoing process, really off of Shaw, off of Lowell. The light blue shows those water improvements, the upgrades. When we say improvements, those are uh, water lines that are getting pulled into the site. You see that the kind of yellow uh, Dijon color there are the neighborhoods in the city review process. 
And for instance, if you look at A5 up there in the corner, and you see below it, you see CC, that means City Council on 9-9. So on 9-9, September 9th, there are a number of these neighborhoods are moving forward to City Council for approval. So we always want to show you the process of both the neighborhoods and the related infrastructure. If you see a site plan, like over here on D1 or A4, those are neighborhoods that have been approved, right? The neighborhood itself, the site plan has been approved. And once the trunk infrastructure is in place, then we'll move forward with the actual construction of that neighborhood. So you're starting to see, as we said last time, there's uh, some neighborhoods, neighborhoods in all of the different parcels that are in the approval process. But again, we're really focused tonight on that trunk infrastructure. I also want to show you again in green, the public land dedication and the cross hash there, the view corridor, those are now dedicated to the city, owned by the city and all related fees. So all of the open space that is given to the rightful owner to the city. Next slide. We're going to talk here in this next one um, about just, you've seen this before. We always start just kind of big picture on the public improvements. We have or will provide $40 million in infrastructure uh, improvements. So we talked a lot about that. This map really shows that. I want to particularly note, because we've had some very good questions here, this off-site North on Lowell that goes over to the existing tank at 97th Avenue. We put that around there. Those improvements and upgrades are needed at approximately 500 units. So we've been talking with the city. When do those improvements come into place? Again, those are funded by Uplands, but the improvements are made by the city. So you see those two offsite. We're clarifying that just so everybody knows the schedule on those improvements. Next. Uh, this is a little bit, we should probably spent uh, more time on this as we should have. There's been a lot of questions, but you can see really the narrative here is probably pretty important to just read on the side there. These are things that have actually uh, been that are improvements that are in place or the approvals have been granted. We are working now construction of the stormwater drainage system within Shaw Boulevard. We're hoping to have that completed in October. So that's an ongoing improvement. We'll go through that. Todd is going to come up in just a moment and talk through a little bit more of that detail. But this is where a lot of the activity has happened here in this corridor focused on the storm drainage and improvement. Next. Uh, the other thing I want to focus on is we have not lost sight of this, right? We started by saying, hey, we're back to school. We understand that the traffic patterns are more intense. People are trying to get to school, drop off their kids. It has a very uh, impact here. These are the four schools that we always think about, right? When our schedule is, how do we work with them? How do we try not to disrupt their traffic pattern? So we had said this third quarter really needed to focus on how we're trying to work with them. We have worked individually to those districts, to the school, to try to provide background information so they know when our roadways and when those constructions are happening. Next. Just get stuck there for a second. Next one is coming up. This shows again a slide and I'll step back here. This has a lot of information on it. We have shown it consistently through all of our presentations. And this really focuses on the public infrastructure that will be built, the roadway, the bikes, the pedestrian level, where I'm on a sidewalk or a bike trail where I can make connections. So many of you are either live here in Observatory Heights, just south of E1 and B2, or in Shaw Heights. You understand that connection point. We always want to show what those roadways, what the sidewalks will look like. This picture up here on the right is 88. That is 88th Avenue now. You can see the south side, the right side of that picture is the newly added lanes. You can see the expansion of that roadway into our site. And the sidewalk on the right of that is a 10 foot multi-use trail. So along 88, you're starting to see a lot of those improvements, but this shows in all of the respective neighborhoods, the fabric, the community fabric that will be added to each neighborhood. Next slide. Uh, this is where I will probably transition here in a moment. Again, I just want to start by saying the water allocation. Uplands has a allocation of 778 acre feet. That is the allocation, has always been that allocation to Uplands. 
we made a projection, a commitment that we would use at least 100 acre feet less of that. That's the 678 acre feet number. And then what we're showing you over here on the right is how the planning on these neighborhood and the usage that we are using. So first we are reducing it by 100 acre feet and then you are seeing other smaller increments of reduction there. So we're well below our projected water use and we'll continue to implement that throughout the community. We're doing that outside the home and inside the home with the appliances, the systems, the water usage outside and the native plant power that we're putting. Next slide. Folks, I'm going to transition here. Uh, Todd's going to join me in just a moment. Todd Jones, I just want to point out something that we show here. This is one of those that is really hard to think about a lot of times from a approval standpoint. How do you work through this? Not all of these applications go to, to city council. A lot of times they go through an administrative process or have other approval entities. So when you look at the master development, these are the applications, the summary of the applications that we put in. And then over here on the right is the administrative approval documents. I just want to point out the red boxes that are up here. Those are approvals that have been granted since our last quarterly meeting. So you are seeing the progress occur here. The traffic impact study approved, filings one, two, three, and four, the final plans approved, right? So all that detail keeps getting left layered on. I will certainly point out here the federal boulevard construction documents that is not yet approved. It is still pending. We are going through the process. It will be approved, but it is continuing to go through that. We are nearing CDOT approval. We had a round of comments back from them, some clarifying comments back from them. We're going through that process. So again, folks, we'll come back to this if you have any questions. These are the documents and the approvals that we submit once they're approved then we can go do the related construction. Next slide. All right, uh, Todd's gonna help me here. Anticipated construction. Most of you are here to talk about construction timelines, right? There is a lot of material in these next four or five slides, but we have really tried to just simplify it, to show it segment by segment where construction is occurring. So Todd is gonna walk us through it. I'll probably ask him a couple of questions as we go through it, and then we'll save those for the end for question and answer. Todd, go ahead. All right, thanks, Marcus. I'm gonna try to speak up here with the fans as well. Go to the next one. Um, and the other thing that we're doing is we're going to um, constantly be updating the website uh, for these closures that we're listing here. Because of construction, they're constantly um, being changed. The weather conditions that may come up or conditions that we're running to in the, in the field. So 84th, uh, right now you've got mold to Irving that is closed. We're putting water lines in that street right now and reconstructing that portion. And I think the other broad uh, point here to make is that understand that this is disruptive um, to everybody uh, as we go through this process, but it is much faster for us to get this work done with the full closures than trying to uh, do this minor uh, work or periodical uh, shutdowns and partial closures. So we appreciate you uh, in this construction time frame uh, with us going through that. So we think uh, October 1st, we should have this blue section done out to Irving, and then we will uh, push over into the green section from Irving to Federal. On the portion that is to the east here, on the other side of Federal, we're just doing some shoulder work right now. The overhead power that's out there and there's some communications, that will actually come down and be put underground. So that's what we're working on right now in that section. Uh, we're also currently working through the D1 parcel, and that construction will start, um, of course, after those approvals. And then federal, as Marcus mentioned, we are basically there with our plans. It's really just the technicalities that we're working through with CDOT right now. They also have a paving project that is coming through in May of next year. So what we'll be doing is trying to get all of our utility work done and our curb and gutter on the outer portions of federal through this area by the time that they come in in May so that we're doing
doing this at one time, and we can leave everything uh, with a clean slate, basically. Uh, next slide. Down in the uh, B parcel area, we have Radburn that's shut down right now. We anticipate that one being opened back up in October um, as well. Um, we've made a lot of good progress there with the utilities, the grading work. The grading work is going to be wrapping up here in the next week or two, and then we'll be starting on-site utility work. But as far as a place, 82nd area goes, that work is also tied to Bradburn work as well. So by October 1st, we should be done uh, within that area too and have Bradburn back open. And then we'll progress into working on the on-sites uh, within the B area. 84th and Lowell, uh, we're working through a couple issues there with Excel on overhead and our traffic signals. We're pushing them to actually get um, that work done as quickly as they can. Uh, we've been working with them actually for the last two years from that perspective and just trying to push them um, to get that work done. So that lowering, um, will occur or the overhead modifications will occur in that area and then the signals will be put in place. So did you show your report on that? Excel. Excel. So folks, the, the question was just about Excel Energy, who we were working with. The reason you go through that process as Todd can detail more is bringing Excel, bringing power to the intersection and actually going through that procurement process to put in the lights, the new standards for everything at that intersection. So that's the green asterisk right there at Bowl and 84th. So you coordinate that. We've been coordinating that with Excel for almost two years to get everything in place there. I do talk just a question here. The low place in 82nd, uh, the yellow dot there, is that come right after Bradburn is completed or how is that happening? We are working Bradburn and the place at the same time. Okay. So when we get Bradburn opened up, that will be finished as well. Um, so we're trying to push that one through as quickly as we can. Terrific. Next slide. Uh, there's a lot, a lot on this slide, so I'll try to break this down. In an overall context, from 84th to 88th, um, there are three or four major projects that are within that overall area. One, as we're bringing the work up Shaw, the storm outfall, we have to go across Lowell to make a connection to the new regional pond that we're putting in. And so there'll be a closure of that area when we do have to cross, but mainly it's going to be partial closures within that area. Um, That's the get, pink asterisk. That's yep, right there. Pink asterisk. Yep. To get across that intersection. And then also, um, as we go to the north, we're currently working with the city on a water and a sewer replacement and modifications that are in that intersection but also that go down to about Chestnut and or 87th, roughly. Um, and so instead of us doing all of our improvements and then the city coming back in a year or so from now and, and doing uh, more construction, uh, we've been working with them to try to get our work accomplished and their work as well in the same time frame so we can limit any improvements um, uh, to that uh, a singular time frame within that area. Um, and then there's some sewer construction that we're doing at Shaw, Shaw and Lowell as well. Um, so not only will we do the storm upgrades, we'll also be doing some sanitary improvements within that area um, and an outfall to our project um, through that. So you have a lot of different areas. Um, and I would say in general from now, really until into February, we're gonna have partial and we're going to have some full closures. Those will all be notified. But in particular, what we think again is that Shaw will be done by October, uh, October 25th, we think, in that area. And then the uh, city project from 88th down to about Chestnut, um, we're projecting that starting hopefully in later September and pushing out into December. And then really the other key component with this is that we're getting into fall, we're really getting into winter. And so our paving is really dependent upon temperatures. And so that's where we can get some delays. That's where we can have some uh, modification, of course, of the schedules that you're seeing uh, here that we have. 
And so that, that's why, again, we will constantly be updating the website with closures and um, any changes that we have in an overall context um, for Lowell. Next one. On site, um, as we get into these different planning areas, B1, um, as I mentioned, we're going to be getting into utilities, on site paving the roadways, paving the alleys, and finishing out that work, uh, we believe, in early 25, maybe even uh, December of this year from a paving perspective, but we might be pushing into early 25 with street lights and Excel and those, those minor things that we finish up. Uh, also outside the season of winter, like landscaping and so forth, okay? Um, the other one, A2 and A4, those are internal to the site, and there's a lot of work that's actually been um, performed in some of those areas, especially A2, because a lot of the major infrastructure went through the A2 parcel. Um, so internally, we'll be doing that work. So again, finishing up the utilities within those streets, paving those streets, and then probably doing landscaping uh, early next year. The A1 and A5, they're along 88th. Those will have some further grading operations for the homes that are there. That is anticipated to start probably sometime in October. And then they will probably push into their on-site construction, uh, probably, uh, we think, in the early 25. Great. The one thing I just want to point out here, and I'll let talk come back. So, folks, we're now showing you the neighborhood inside the roadways, the constructions that we're anticipating here. So, uh, obviously, walking through B1, just north of Observatory Heights, there is a transition into Shaw Heights. The reason B1 is moving forward, Bradford is closed today, right? That's a neighborhood that is fully approved B1 is. And so, we are also doing grading at that same time. So, people who live made the transition to these individual neighborhoods. Again, I started there by saying all of these neighborhoods are going through separate approval processes at City Council, right? So for example, A1, A5, and A7, two purple and the corner there, those go to City Council on 9-9. They have to go through that approval process. We have an associated development plan, uh, scenarios with all of that then these improvements could commence, right? So you're seeing the overall roadways and then on-site development activities. The first neighborhood that will be built in Uplands is very likely to be B1, right? The roadway will be completed. Bradburn is closed today. So we're going through that process now. And as you see here, B1, our grading should be completed in September, next month, September of 2024. And then we can go through, you see, through early 2025, and then that neighborhood could commence, commence on actual home building. So you're seeing really that trunk infrastructure, the overall infrastructure, then the neighborhoods being graded, utilities being pulled into the site, and then the home building would commence on each one of them. So it is all related, of course, but just pointing out again, the one here, that'll be the first neighborhood that will have homes. Uh, we anticipate that that is probably towards the second quarter of next year when construction could commence, and we probably have home sales or mostly completed homes by the end of 2025 or first quarter of 2026. So that just gives you an overall picture of how important it is this overall roadways. I'm gonna transition, I think Jacob, maybe we go to the next slide, or do you have one more you wanna to go to? Yeah, uh, the, one that we're, the one that we did talk about was yep. the C parcel. Um, oh, sorry. So the, the area in blue that you see on the right side here, that's another area, I mean, haven't been out or seen that. We just have started to put into our, our erosion control into the ground, and then we'll start that grading and those roadway improvements. Uh, within the next month here. You'll, you'll start to see a lot more work there. Plus, the C parcel itself um, just received its approval for site work, and that one um, will probably commence here in the next two weeks as well. Great. So, folks, I'm going to acknowledge, I want to uh, discuss with all of you and for the listeners that are online. So, we go through this uh, construction process, we complete.
completely understand that it is disruptive, it interrupts daily life, it changes all of that. As you saw today, and we're happy to go back through any of these slides, we are trying to condense that period of intensity and in a lot of ways move it from the public realm, the roadways, and move it on site into each one of these individual neighborhoods. Yes, construction occurs there, will continue to occur there, but it's on site, right? It's not disrupting traffic flow, making those changes. So we're going through that. Uh, construction is challenging. We had two significant uh, uh, weather events this year. Uh, we have had, our construction team had two work stoppage or two stop orders on the site during the last construction period. We have worked through those. The city has been a great partner, and they've also enforced when we've had violations. So we've had two stop work orders and related violations, and we will continue to work through anything that comes up. We do believe that hopefully we've reached a place on the Lowell corridor and also the cycle of weather that we're in, that we're headed to fall, hopefully not those rain events that we had. So I just want to acknowledge that. I understand frustration. I understand, hey, I want to drive my roads like I normally get to do them. We are making those improvements and really through the second quarter of 2025 is when you'll start to see that grid really come into the area and make those improvements. So if we go to the next slide, folks, I know we're going to go back to forth. Uh, Jacob is helping us by going to slides. We can do that. It just takes a minute to get back to those slides. We're happy to. So, folks, we're going to pause there. We honestly just wanted to have a little bit more direct of a presentation. So we only had 19 slides. It is just about the construction and that overall timeline. So I'm happy to pause here, take questions, and try to work through any information that you'd like to receive about our proposed construction schedule. So go right ahead. I'm going to repeat your question for the folks that are online just so they can hear it as well. Any questions? Yes, Don. What's Street going to look like? I know I've heard letters that Street Great. So Todd, I'm gonna to repeat just the question just so everybody can hear it. The question was, what's my street? What's our street on? Yes. Yeah, we'll come back and go through it. Sorry, Don. We'll come back and I'll repeat it just so they can hear it online. What is 82nd gonna look like? What is that street gonna look like? That's the new proposed kind of cold de sacking of 82nd. So Todd, can you talk about that, Jacob? I'm so sorry, I don't know if we can go up one or two where it goes. Uh, maybe one more. There you go. So this is uh, the intersection here of the place in 82nd. Maybe just describe generally what that new roadway will look like on the northern end, sorry, northern end of Observatory Heights. Yeah, so we will formalize that area. So there'll be a curb gutter on each side. It'll have asphalt um, within it and it'll create a cul-de-sac. Yeah. The trees are down as the Yeah, where they're going to be. Yes. Yeah, the trees that are there right now will come out because of the roadway improvements. How wide is it going to be? How wide is the cul-de-sac going to be, right, is the question. Oh. Yep, great. Yeah, On so 82nd again, Todd, do you know the exact dimensions of that? No, I don't know off the top of my head. I can't remember <laughs> that, but um, it's generally, you'll you'll have parking. Uh, so it'll be a typical roadway. I think I think your right away is 57 feet or something like that, right? So you have parking on both sides. You have a travel lane in each direction, and the cul-de-sac is actually going to be about 100 feet uh, in diameter, so 100 feet across from flow line to flow line. So we are. The both are both cul-de-sacs the same size. So on the place right and then again on 82nd will those be the same size or are they designed a little different yeah you, maybe i misunderstood you before but the cul-de-sac will be at the end of 82nd right right and then you'll come down and you'll make uh turn back onto the place there that won't have a cul-de-sac that will just be um a curve in the road there. Uh, cul de sac at a place in Bradford? Well, it'll be terminated, so you won't be able to make the connection there. So, I think one thing I just want to clarify for Dawn so I can point out here this is all a focus, and we're talking about looking at trunk infrastructure here. This is the place, this is really 82nd, basically, right here. 
remember just so everybody who's watching, we when we did E1, we included these improvements, even though they were on the south side of Bradford, because of the slope, the changes, the need to improve this all at one time. So that's why you're seeing these roadway improvements that are happening right now. The design and, and some of the questions that we have here that's asking about those things. Those actually happen in the B2 design when we go through that neighborhood. So we may not know all of those yet. That goes through the neighborhood plan. But your questions about the street are completely fair. And that's the process. So there you go. Yeah, clearly shows it. So this shows it a little better. So B1, when we went and got this approved, again, a site plan is shown. So this neighborhood is approved. We also approved the termination, if you will, of the place. So it no longer connects with Bradburn because of the angle, the danger, all of the things. It terminates here and basically makes the cul-de-sac on 80 stack, right? So that is the roadway. So really, it's one cul-de-sac, if you will. And then this is the termination of a place into 80 second. So that's the way it looks. This landscaping, this purple area, this uh, landscaping strip along Bradburn, that's all associated in our B2 application that is not yet before city council. So we're going through that process. So we'll continue to design that. Yes, sir. There's two roads Well, I, we're not, I, the question was, are there two cul-de-sacs? I mean, effectively, we can call a place where it ends here a cul-de-sac. We're really just showing it as a termination where the road basically curves here and then the full cul-de-sac. I don't know, Todd, if that's, that, that's how I think about it. You're not wrong. This basically acts as a cul-de-sac, but really the turnaround, the rounding out of the cul-de-sac is here on 87. Strange place to work, right? Yeah, I think so. The question was strange place. Yes, John, go ahead. Very nice. So, it's so, all right, go ahead. So here, that's a bill to check in. No worries. Uh, my question is 86 to 84 being closed. Why wasn't that work performed? last earlier this year when that was already closed for months why wasn't that all then why are we doing it a second time the reason i say that yeah is this time of year now we've got school buses traversing all of sure. these old projects we've got school buses going to and from two schools up there actually three schools as well as our first responders coming from the fire department or the police coming from the police department sure that low is a major thoroughfare it, it's not conducive to the neighborhood. So let me, can I stop you there, John, just so I can repeat it? Because not everybody can hear it, okay? So, and I'll miss part of it, John, but the primary question is from 80 seconds, right, to 84 on the roll, right? Why was that, we're closing it in the future, why weren't those improvements made over the last couple of months, Which right? We had it closed before. Right, we had it closed before. So Todd, can you address, why did all of that occur then? Or why was the closure? Was that related to Bradburn or what was happening there? Yeah. Yeah, so a couple things related to that. One, uh, we have the water line, major water line construction that we put in uh, the 24 inch uh, from 82nd, or sorry, 84 down to the Bradburn area. And then we are also working with Excel right now because they have not been able to move the electric uh, overhead You're out of the way. Where we're talking, we're talking 82nd. To 84. That's what I'm saying. That's what we're talking about right here. This is the water line that got pulled in right there. So that was the but water. That other street, the other yeah. part of the wall was closed for months. Yeah. Why so was it here, John? Is there one there? Well, it's closed. It was closed right here because that's where the detour occurred. Right. Okay. And then right now we are waiting for Excel to lower uh, and remove and push out their overhead power. So we can't do anything in the roadway until that's done. We have uh, terrific neighbors, terrific partners, and enforcement agencies, and we cannot do work until it's authorized and approved, and we can't do their part. So, John, when you say that correctly, why was it closed down here? Because that's what allowed for a detour. So that was the second thing. Again, though, I, I, my question also is the northbound will yes. show up. Yeah. Now we're going to close half of the street. Sure. So northbound. Uh, from on again on the north of Shaw. Why do you close? How do you close 
84. You've talked about, or excuse me, Lowell. You said some partial closures and some full closures, and you detailed that. If you don't mind, you're sure uh, northbound. Yep, northbound. If you don't mind, Jacob, if you can show that focus area on the wall. This way. Their way? Okay. Yeah. Well, I could be completely, I was okay. wrong. Timeline. All of this junk, the truth, the facts, all of that work could not be done in a time period that not a There is just, that is the reality of the construction schedule. All of you see these construction schedules. John, those are longer than it would take to be closed. School, my kids just went back, we're out for two months. That cannot occur during a summer break. There is going to be some overlap with school calendars. Of that. Let's move on to some other problems that we're having. The sure. trash on site, meaning there was stuff that set up at 88 the hole, mattresses, furniture, tree limbs for days and weeks. Okay. I find it had been in a hall. That's Upland's responsibility that needs to be checked daily, I believe, is what I was told by the city. Okay. To take care of it. Why does that continue? Why is that happening? So I mean, let me continue. I just want to repeat it. Nobody can hear you, John. So we're just standing here waiting. So uh, if you'll let me repeat and then I'll go forward. We're gonna run out of time because she took over 35 minutes. Go right ahead, Jimmy. The mosquito problem that we're having. Yes. That standing water over there on wool and at that pond that is green, mold, algae, growing cattails now. Unacceptable for our neighborhood. That that's not being good neighbors. The stink and the smell down on Shaw Boulevard from what they're doing down there. The neighbors are complaining about that. Uh, the water fountain was called up over on Lowell about 8541, where the water continually comes up out of the ground. Why does that continue to happen? Why isn't that? I, I, it ends up going down Lowell, going down Shaw. They just had to replace a major piece of asphalt down on Lowell at Shaw because of that water damage. That's four. I'm not going to remember more than that. I won't even remember those. Right, Let me uh, start. What, 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 this yep, is okay, good. 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 Why are the Upland people blocking people in our neighborhood from their website? Blocking people from their yeah. website. Okay, so let me start with blocking people. That's right. not being good neighbors. I the the Save the Farm group has never blocked anyone from Uplands or or any of your outlets. Great. We get your cool. blocking neighbors that are asking questions and concerns. So let me go through it. I'll try to go through it. I'm gonna to try to do one at a time. I apologize. The first one that I remember is the question at 88th and Lowell that there has been trash, uh, mattresses, things like that, obviously coming from off-site, illegal dumping that's occurring because there's not mattresses on-site. So how is the cleanup? How do we regulate any uh, dumping trash that accumulates on the site? I believe that can be answered by the city person sitting right there. I was read that earlier today by Angie from Parks and Rec. Perfect. There's a provision. We're happy to let, let me give this answer, and then if the city would like to comment, that would be great. Go ahead, Yeah, um, so there is trash that's coming from off-site. People are coming out, unloading, dumping everything on the site because it's one of the I was just saying they dump it at Davies Locker or the other Well, they dump it at Davies, too. Uh, they dump it everywhere. Um, and so we try to pick it up as quickly as we can. And we have dumpsters, and we have to go around and pick it up. Your people don't drive up and down the road daily. They have to sit there all day. Well, we have to get dumpsters as well. And coordinate. There's a dumpster on the side over there. So it's, we appreciate it. So John, it sounds like we're, we're trying to do it. John, I'm going to honestly, we are going to have a conversation. We're going to be respectful or you're not going to get another question. Well, no, 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 no. We're, we're all adults. Nobody's lying here. Well, he tells me we've got to get a dumpster. There's John. Like sitting over there John. currently. Has been since Everybody else here has questions. Everybody else can be respectful and won't answer them. We will continue to pick up trash on site. I am sorry it is not immediate. It will not be immediate, John. Uh, dumping occurs all over every metro city. It is a huge challenge in our daily lives. And luckily we have somebody here who has dumpsters and will try to address it. If the city thinks we're not being responsive or quick enough, they will cite us and we will concur. So we will try to do it fully respect. We want to do a better job of that. Obviously that's not our trash that is being dumped there mattresses, etc. The second one, I think, was about mosquitoes on site because of water on site. 
Todd, what are we doing? Is there standing water? How do you address that so we don't have mosquitoes on site? Well, the water, I think that you're talking about that's running down a hole um, is because we have not made a connection into the large pond yet. We've not connected our sewer into uh, the new upgrade that we're making on Bowl. And so all of that work will direct a lot of the, the drainage along Bowl and interior to the site will be finished when we finish the last cell of the pond, which is being built next to Lowell and into the project. And so that groundwater issue that you're seeing out there right now will be taken care of when those are finished. So. That's it. And is that, that related to the fuel system? It's groundwater. But, but you're saying. So there is groundwater today. So just so everybody sees here on 83, you see the pink asterisk. That connection is being made to the large pond that is there. When that connection is made, we'll be able to stop. There's groundwater, some seepage that is occurring basically on Shaw down that boat. And so that is some of that. You asked about the, the sprinkler, the water fountain. Yeah, yeah, so it's a groundwater. Great. Yeah, it's a natural resource. Why are we just wasting it? Well, it's groundwater that will eventually go into the to the pond and then also go into the shore. How do to the pond? It's, it's 50 feet to the north of the pond. That's coming out of the sewer plane. I don't know, I, obviously you don't know that I, I, what, I, what I'm talking about. I know exactly. I've been talking about that it's chasing that pipe from somewhere outside. Yeah, so I, I, know, know, I know exactly what you're talking about. And what I just said is that we haven't finished the sewer connection. Okay, we have to finish the storm mount falls into the pond, and those will all take care of the groundwater coming back onto the I'm going to come over here and I'll come back when I remember John's last question. Yes, please. I have a question with regards to this pond that you're referring to. Yes. Is it a pond or is it a retention pond? And if so, does it have the ability to have recyclable water going into uh, various irrigation systems once those are created? Uh, we actually have the tension. Can you repeat that, but just so I can hear it. Yeah, right. So the question was, is, yeah. it, is it a retention pond or is it a detention pond? And then uh, also, are we using this water for irrigation? Can, can it eventually yep. be recycled into that once, this, once the community is developed? Yeah. So these are actually detention ponds and water quality ponds. So what they do is they treat the water in the initial events. They also detain the water down to historic levels, or in our case, actually, below historic levels. Um, we're, we're doing extra work on, on with these ponds. And then it's released in the Shaw outfall that we're building right now. That water is not kept on site and used for irrigation. Um, we don't have non-potable out here. We have to release that storm drainage off um, historically, um, but we're not using non-pot. There's no non-pot system in this area. So. Sure, not, uh, but also, and I know this was not your exact question, we are certainly looking at uh, plant palette, native plants, all of the things we can do to really not use as much water up front, but we don't have an actual reuse system, a non pot that's on site. Next question. Any other questions? It's okay. Go right ahead, John. Still waiting on a response on my Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's what happens. When we answer four at a time, I'm going to forget them. So, no, 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 it's no problem at all. Uh, there was a suggestion made that uplands.com is blocking people. Um, that's a website. I have no idea what that means. I don't know how that is possible. Again, info at uplands.com is the an Facebook email. Page, Marcus, the Facebook page. Okay, so that's an email system. So I'm going to answer. Sorry, I misunderstood that. So the first one is, is the website, which you actually said first, blocking people? No, it's not. Uh, that is an email site that you can do that. Facebook uh, is now the correction on that. Facebook is blocking people. Uh, I actually don't know if we go through and go through that. Um, maybe some people are watching it. I think uh, there's some, you know, curating of feedback or comments that are on there. If people are being respectful, going through that. So if that does, <clears throat> excuse me, if that does happen, uh, I'll figure out what the protocol is on that. I don't know that process, but that is certainly true that I would see a private developer go through. But I'll be sure and ask that question. I've been told that by one of the residents. He's been blocked from posting on the Facebook page. Yeah, so I don't know if a resident's been blocked. I appreciate it. I'll look into that. I'm happy to look into it. I, I guess I would probably say, I don't know what has been blocked or what has been removed. That might be a better question about what led to that, but 
there are protocols that are in place just as we all try to be respectful in meetings and kind of go through that process. Happy to go through. Sewer smell. Sewer smell. Do we see, uh, are we having uh, smells? Is that part of the construction process? Is that what's going on or is that related to the lawn? Any thoughts on that? Uh, I don't. Uh, we have not heard about the sewer smell. Um, is this on Shaw or what? Yeah, on Shaw, that much of what's been going on for a week now. Can't complain to the neighbors down there. I brought it to the city's attention a week ago. Okay. Great. So we've been monitoring the, uh, the sanitary sewer because it's right next to the storm drainage installation. Um, but our contractor has not brought that up to us specifically. But we'll address it. That's great. So are there. Here's the pipe. John, let us answer this one first about smells that are coming. Anything related to that, John? If you want to enter, introduce yourself, if you don't mind, and no, no, no. answer that, that'd be great. So yeah, John Burke, city engineer. So yeah, Mr. Blomer, I think you brought that to my attention. I talked to my construction inspector, Bob Wood. He's been actively patrolling that area. The big storm sewer pipe that's going up Shaw right now is in very close proximity to the existing sanitary sewer line that's also in Shaw. So we are concerned. We're watching that have not witnessed any sort of breaks in that line. We're actually taking very seriously what that concern is. So we'll continue to monitor that. Appreciate it. Thanks for bringing that up. We'll continue to monitor that for sure. Are there other questions, comments, offsite? We'll go back to any of the schedules, anything that you'd like to look at. Please, yeah. It's all fine with Andy that you have all this information on your sure. website, these closures and stuff. But there's a great part of the community that doesn't want to go to the outlets and refuses to go to the outlets. It would be nice if the city could include that on the city's website where they have all the other street closures, you know, on Facebook or on the city website. There's plenty of room there. If uh, a communication people can't do that, maybe we need to uh, look at getting somebody that can do that. Well, the first thing I'll say is this is. Uh, being provided right now by the city, and this meeting is being shown again, and but it's what available. What I'm saying is, yes. after tonight, right. people want to be able to go to the website, say, or on, on Facebook, like if you go there now. Yep. Currently today, you'll see four or five street closures. Great. And why and how long? Why not? I think it's a great idea. Can we update this not just on Upland's platform, but also on the city? So I, I'm going to ask if that's all right. If Jacob or somebody, it goes. This goes to YouTube, to the city channel, is that correct? So it can be watched, I'm, I hear you, I'm giving a more complete answer than you're willing to accept. So it's available for anybody to watch as often as they want. Then is there a static presentation that somebody can go through? And if not, we're happy to provide the slides that somebody could go through on their own time. Uh, currently, we are not posting the slides on our website. Uh, that's something we can take into consideration. That's great. So it's a good consideration. We can take really, as you said, Mr. Palmer, those four or five slides kind of show that construction schedule. We could pull that out of there and share that. So I think that's perfectly fine. So it is available. It's just not available without watching the meeting, right? So you're fair. Let's provide those information and work with the city if there's a way to post those. That's great. It doesn't bother me at all to have them. People don't want to go to the Uplands website, then they could go to the city website to look at that same information. That's what the people are asking for. That's great. And, and, and you keep saying Facebook. We had a meeting last Thursday night in town hall, and the majority of the people don't like going that far now. Okay. They, they like to look at it something quite a copy. Yeah, good. I, I get it. So I, I said it, John, like maybe it's an attachment, maybe it's something they can open, they can print out, right? Whatever that is. I think these four slides, one of uh, this is one of those four, really shows that we'll make that available in the way they can. It may be not if everybody wants to go to the Uplands website, but that we could actually provide that as just an attachment, so somebody could print it out and never go to the website again. So we'll do that on our side, and then we'll try to make it available to the city. It's a very good suggestion. Are there other comments, questions? We can't take questions from online, right? It's just people can observe it. Okay. I just want to be sure and check if there were online questions. Yes, Don. Yes. 
That is correct. So, yep, if we can go through that again, I'm going to try to go through that image just to show it. Uh, we can just get a plan. Yep, we're going to show you a plan afterwards so you can actually look at the image, okay? But I'm going to show it here for everybody else. And again, we're talking about this intersection there. I had a little image somewhere that showed a little bit of that. The idea is the question was place port going northbound there, does that close? Yes, it will no longer connect to Bradford. It cannot make the turn uh, to Bradford any longer. So it is closed. A, what forces effectively a right hand turn onto 82nd, right? and that on 82nd in front of the there will do a full to south. So if I place, don't know it doesn't connect. It allows me to turn around on 82nd and turn back. So you are correct, sir. No connection to uh, Bradburn, uh, and it makes a force kind of right hand turn to 82nd. Hopefully that clarifies it. There you go. There you go. That shows it the best we can. Ah. Online, maybe you can see it better, but it does force a right hand turn. There. That shows it right there, folks. Gone. No, this is it in full view there. You can see that and how it lays out. John, if you can let me show this. This actually shows the layout here. Coming down the place, north on the place, turning right, forcing it on to 82nd, and a full full to second. Why don't you point out the books and also they have a real house? Well, it's okay. I don't have to point out that there are houses. There are houses here on 82nd. There are houses here on the place. Uh, this was a, a long consideration from a lot of neighbors from Observatory Heights um, that goes through that. So that was an determination. That's correct. So the question was, and I may look at Todd or he can answer this, the land you would, we are going to use to create that cul-de-sac there on 82nd, is that B2 land? Is that city right away? What is that land? That's B2 land. So lane. we, we uh, provided an additional uh, area there for that cul-de-sac. B2 land first, that then becomes public yes. right away? Yes. Yes. Very important. B2 land, our land, Upland's land, then gets dedicated to the city with that improvement that becomes city right of way. Okay. The distance between, we're going to have to get you a plan, the distance between our street, 82nd, and the cul-de-sac, right? That's what you're asking. Yeah. We're going to have to show, do you know that's how it It's the same street. Are you, are you in this? Yeah. Are you at the end of the call, end of the uh, road? One in. One in. Yep. It's two here. Yeah. I just have this short little story to um, I would say that's probably about uh, 100 feet to 150 feet. We think about 100 feet to that. But why don't we show you, like, in the plans? So we can send that to you directly. If you signed up, we'll send that to you, that snippet of that plan. Okay? Okay. Good. That's my number. We've got your email for sure. Jasper, we've got it. Yes. Good. Other questions, comments? We're doing great. I, I don't know. I'm happy to take one more. Anything else? All right. Uh, there's a game. I want to thank everybody very much. Thanks for your patience working through this. Everybody have a great night. Thank you. Thanks, you.